Hello everyone and you're welcome back. In our last lesson, I showed you how you could browse the GDevelop Asset Store to look for a specific asset and we just checked for a simple player character and dragged it into our scene. In this lesson, I'll just show you some other places you can have access to some game assets. So like we discussed, our game assets are, you know, the people behind creating these art assets itself. And then we have things like the characters, the background artwork, the game music and the you know some code in some other engines some other sound effects and in some instances some ai tools that you can use to you know place enemy paths and enemy patrols so there are a lot of websites for free assets we have the unity asset store at unity.com and we also have the uh, h.io store personally i like using a gentleman call and seamers on h.io so uh we're actually going to click on this link and I'll show you where you can find you know, that. In fact, we can actually do that, but I'll do that at the end of the presentation so that we uh, have a streamlined flow. So this gentleman has a lot of nice 2D art assets that are beautifully made and some of them are actually free. All you need to do is to make sure you credit that gentleman and then you can actually you know, pay for some royalty tips if you want. So we're going to be using the um, Sunnyland Woods which is this one. Now the website might actually uh, change on each.io and whenever you click that link, you can say, just take me to the download. Or if you're feeling generous, you can specify any amount you want to pay this artist and you can just download that file and import the game assets, save those assets and import them, which is what we're actually going to do right now. So I'll head over to uh, click this link. This should open up in my uh, web browser. So I'll just go ahead and it's opening up right now. And we're actually on that uh, page. Feel free to select any game kit you want, but remember you need a game kit that has at least a playable character. So I'll click on Sunnyland. So we can actually see it right here, Sunnyland Forest. We can also have uh, Funnyland Woods. So I'll just click on Sunnyland Forest because I kind of like this one. We can pick any... Uh, one you want so we can just drag down here and click on download now and more importantly you can actually look at these assets and see how they're set up you can see the player character an enemy character and some expansion files you can actually see here so let's go ahead and just click on download now and click on no thanks just take me to the downloads So uh, let's go ahead and try that again. So good. So we should actually have that uh, download starting up. So once it's done, it's going to download this as a zip file. So what you might need to do is to extract this uh, file. So I'll just go over here and click on that file. And it's going to take me to my downloads file. So what I'm going to do is to right click and I'll just cut that. And what I'm going to do is to head over to my OneDrive and let's head over to the folder where we have our GDevelop project. So now that we have this here, I'm going to open our first project and I'm going to go over into the assets, right click, and I'll just paste this into the assets folder. What I'll also do is to right click and then I'm going to say extract all. If you're on a Windows system, you can extract directly to that folder and this should open up and show you some of the uh, you can actually visualize and see the contents in that asset folder it all depends on you you can actually choose some of those sound files background files and create separate folders but these are all the files so if you click this and open this up under the png files under the sprites we can actually open up the player assets and we can see our player idol like so and if we go to view and make this extra large, we can actually see that this is our uh, player idol. So we actually have this within our project folder. And what I'd actually like to do is to optimize space. So this one here with the zip icon, this one right here, I'll just go ahead and delete this because this is the extracted file we want. This is the compressed file. So I'll just say shift delete just to get rid of that. 
So now we have this in our assets file. We can always go to open show more and refresh. So let's just close this and let's just minimize this. And let's also exit from our presentation so we can get back to GDevelop and see how we can bring in our assets. So let's go ahead and just click on add a new project. This is not our project. Let's go ahead and say open recent and let's open our first project like so. All right. So let's go ahead and say uh, add new object. Let's add a sprite. Let's call that sprite our player. Now let's click on add animation. All right. So let's see uh, player. So let's click on add animation and let's add a sprite. So let's say choose a file and let's go to our assets, Sunnyland Forest, Sunnyland Forest files, our PNG, our sprites, our player. Now let's bring in our player idle. And let's click on this and click open. So here we can set a name for our animation. I'll just call that idle like so. And what we can do is to preview the animation. Now this is super uh, fast, right? So if we actually click on that, we can actually see our player moving like so. And we can set this on loop because it's an idle animation. So when we preview right now, we can actually see our player moving like so. If this is too fast, we can switch this over to half. So 0.8. Let's say uh, uh, we need to increase that to point. Let's say one four, and that's super. Uh, if we click OK, that's super fast. So let's set this to zero point uh, one six because it was 0.18 and this is kind of like slow. You'll actually figure a value you can use, let's say 0.14 and let's preview. All right, cool. So we actually have imported our idle uh, animation. If we click apply and we can drag our player to the scene like so and we can just see our sad and lonely player. So that's how you can import an asset and then you can have that asset on a specific uh, layer if you want. So basically that's the base. So in our next lesson, we're going to be importing all the assets. We're going to be importing the specific animations, naming them properly. If you want to change properties about an object, you can go back here and change the object. Well, once the object has been dragged into the scene, it means you have the instance of that object. So I'll go ahead and delete that, delete that, click and press delete. So uh, also let's go ahead and save our scene. So let's head over here and just call this our, well, let's click on here and say rename. Uh, let's just call that our, our start scene and click here. So let's go ahead and go over here and say save. So we've actually saved our project and saved our scene. Now this is going to be a retro game. So I want the resolution to be 320 by 180. So I'll click over here and I'll go to properties. And over here, I'll just set this to, uh, let's see, uh, 320 by uh, 180. And I'll click apply. This is going to reduce the size of our screen. And if we want to see our object in our preview, make sure that your game object is actually here. So this is going to be the size of the screen. We can bring out the grid. I'm going to say show grid. And we can actually see our character right here. It's actually snapping to the grid. If you don't want it to snap, you can always uh, turn off the grid and you can freely place your character any way you want. All right, so this is going to be our uh, input and our base character. See you guys in the next lesson where we import our other assets and start modifying and preparing our game for, uh, you know, for uh, using controllers.